Hi friends, my name is Trish Roberts and um, the other day on my personal page I asked um, if anybody had any questions about veganism and uh, a couple of people did and one of them I wanted to share some of the questions that they asked and excuse me and also attempt to answer them and um, so this this one uh, the question was if everyone went vegan what would we do with all the livestock that was still around there must be millions of cows pigs chickens and sheep just in the US do we turn them into pests into pets sorry well that's a um, a question it's interesting that that question comes up fairly regularly when people are um, when the, the topic of veganism comes up some people tend to find different questions and and reasons to sort of not focus on their own behavior so um, this question comes up a lot which I find is interesting but um, in a vegan world which I think would be fantastic um, we animals would be recognized as um, part of the moral community meaning they're not things they're not property to be used as resources um, and so therefore we would stop breeding them into existence by the tens of million uh, tens of billions um, we would stop uh, because that's what we do every year we breed oh a hundred billion or more there's one trillion non-humans aquatic and land animals are killed every year so that's a tremendous amount of violence and so we'd stop breeding them into existence and then we would look after those animals that are in existence now and um, look after them for their natural lives and we wouldn't be breeding any more into existence the domesticated animals um, a lot of uh, those domesticated animals by the way cannot breed uh, by themselves they require artificial insemination a lot of dairy cows are artificially inseminated probably uh, industry thinks that's more efficient but there are turkeys that um, cannot breed anymore and they have to be artificially inseminated so that's sort of a common thing but anyway that's what we would do in a vegan world we would would not be uh, we would look after those animals that are in existence now we would not be breeding any more into existence to use them as resources and um, and uh, no we wouldn't be turning them into pets <laughs> so that's that's the first question I think that's the the short answer of that so the next question from this person was um, how do vegans feel about predators um, do we expect tigers and lions and so forth to become vegan too or are we more comfortable with them becoming extinct well no um, those animals belong on the planet just as we human animals do um, and predators are no more important in a ethical vegans eyes than um, than any other animal and we and lions and tigers and other predators like them um, are not able to make moral decisions like human animals are um, human animals can decide we can decide uh, not to participate in violence and to uh, protect the vulnerable by not using them as things as resources lions and tigers can't do that and so we because we can do that uh, we should do that and we should um, we have a moral obligation not to exploit the vulnerable and that's what non-humans are uh, they're vulnerable and um, they have no one to speak for them except us and we exploit them because we can so um, we humans can do something about it uh, we we can do something about participating in this tremendous injustice and violence that we are doing right now when we sit down three times a day to eat animal products and to use animals um, wear them etc we we can do something right now to stop that and it doesn't require any um, organizations to help us any governments or co corporations uh, it doesn't require any um, anything at all except our moral decision to recognize that these 
uh, non-humans that are on our plates and on our bodies, etc., the wool, the leather, fur, silk, etc., they were sentient beings and they love life just as we do and do not want to die. They love their young, they um, interact with one another in the environment. They have many wonderful qualities that we probably cannot see. They also have incredible skills that we cannot do. That doesn't make us lesser just because we have different skills to them, just because we have different cognitive abilities to them, doesn't make us more morally important. We're all equally morally important. So that's why, um, although, you know, um, tigers and lions, they cannot make that moral decision not to kill, and they're killing because that they're obligate carnivores and they um, require uh, flesh to survive. We do not. We do not need animal products to survive. I've said this many times, we can easily meet all our nutrition needs from plants and other non-animal sources. So we don't need animal products at all. In fact, in the amounts we're eating them, they're killing us. And um, it's also killing the planet. Our um, animal product consumption is also killing the environment as 51% of greenhouse gases are from animal use industry. And we can quibble about the percentage, but that's um, it's, it's a tremendous amount of, um, uh, it's an ecological catastrophe really. And uh, just in this one fact alone, one acre of uh, the Amazon rainforest is being cleared every minute for animal agriculture. That's just one of the many, many catastrophic environmental um, um, impacts that we have when we consume animal products. So. Um, and I'll leave some. I'll leave a link to um, Chris Hedge's essay, Apocalyptic Capitalism. If you looked at page two, it gives quite a, a lot of facts on on the disaster that is animal agriculture. So you know, the, we don't. We we have a moral obligation not only to non-human animals not to use them as resources, but all the other effects of animal agriculture on the planet and on, um, you know, the climate refugees now are in the millions and that it'll only get worse. And so we're participating in that. We're participating in uh, world hunger because there's a huge amount of grain is, um, is given to animals in animal agriculture that could be, that is often exported from very poor countries. And also soy is also grown in the Amazon rainforest. Um, that's part of the clearing of one acre every minute of Amazon rainforest is for soy production to be fed to animals and an animal agriculture. Um, there's tremendous uh, water consumption in relation to animal agriculture. The dairy industry, one dairy cow, uh, 1,100 um, gallons of um, water it takes to make one gallon of milk. So these are all things that we need to remember, but the most important thing we need to remember is that just because um, a sentient being is from another species, it doesn't mean that we have the right to use them. Just as if somebody is from a different race or a different sexual orientation or a different gender, we don't have the, the, the right to discriminate against them and otherize them. They just happen to be different to us, and so what? And difference is, is a great thing. Uh, I know that there are some groups on the planet that want to homogenize everything, but difference is a, is a wonderful thing, and it's a natural thing. And species is not, is not a criterion to persecute those, those sentient beings. They're sentient beings, and they have a right to be in the moral community just as we do. And they're, vun they're vulnerable, which means we have even more of a moral obligation to watch out for them and not to use them, just as we would with, say, somebody who had a mental disability. I'm not saying that we, I'm equating that necessarily, but I'm saying that these are all vulnerable groups that require that we have a moral obligation to not exploit them, even more so. So that's, um, that's probably the second question um, this person had. And, um, and then there was the, the last question, which was about um, plants. This often comes up, I'm not sure why, but <laughs> um, it's often like a distraction. But this is, well, what about plants? Um, people go on about plant sentience. Well, there's one thing that's debatable about plants being sentient, but it's not debatable that anim if non-human animals are sentient, that scientifically, Science uh, has 
uh, definitely um, you know decided that non-human animals are sentient so you know we uh, plants um, they who knows you know I mean I, I think that we need to think about the things that we sh are of the animals that are obviously sentient we can we can definitely do something and not use them we don't know if plants are sentient but we know animals are sentient and if and and putting it this way animals eat <laughs> if people who say this who ask this question are, are really um, are really uh, concerned about plants being sentient which I doubt because um, they haven't stopped using animals and animals are definitely sentient uh, but if they if they were they should stop eating and uh, e eating animals because animals eat far more plants than uh, we do as humans so if they're sincerely interested in um, plants uh, and their sentience then which I sincerely doubt but if they if they are then they should stop eating animals because animals eat far more plants than vegans ever could so anyway that's the sort of the very that's the short answer of that but I mean you know there's no doubt that animals are sentient and pe people that are sort of going what about plants well that's um, oftentimes just sort of like that's getting <laughs> getting to the the bottom of the barrel for questions that are trying to distract from our own behavior and what we're in where what we're participating in so um, anyway uh, that's that's really all I that these are all the only questions that came up just recently so if anybody has any questions at all about veganism I'm more than happy to answer them um, and doesn't matter you know how um, you know sort of trivial that you think they are um, any sincere questions are welcome and uh, thanks very much for watching my name's Trish Roberts I have um, a few vegan pages but the one I'd like to bring your attention to is howtogovegan.org um, I think it's a really good resource it um, has a strong ethical base which is what veganism is veganism is not a diet or a, a, um, a fad or it's not extreme it's not um, you know it's not a health kick or any of that it's an ethical position and this uh, and how to go vegan org will assist you in becoming um, vegan through ethical means which is what will keep you vegan and that's what we want we want to remain vegan and then educate others to be vegan too so thank you very much for watching please share this with others and I will leave the links to um, to the couple of um, the site that I mentioned and also to Chris Hedges essay thanks very much for watching bye for now